Welcome back everyone. In this video, we are going to learn how to manually trigger both form and field level validations with Formic. To be able to trigger validations manually, Formic provides us with two helper methods. In order to access these methods though, we need to use the render props pattern on the entire form itself. This should seem familiar to you by now, but let's quickly revisit the render props pattern. If you take a look at the address form control, you can see that we have a function as children. This function automatically receives some props and then returns some JSX. Similarly, if we take a look at the field array component for phone numbers, we again have the same pattern. Function as children, function receives props and returns JSX. Now though, we are going to have function as children on the top level formic component. The function will receive some props which we are going to call as formic and then return the entire form component. So within the formic component, curly braces, function as children and it receives props which we are going to call as formic and it is going to return JSX. And this, we are going to be returning the entire form component. So I'm going to expand form component, cut this out and paste it inside our return statement. So let me repeat this. Function as children for the formic component. And then this gives us access to props, which we are going to call as formic. And it is going to return some JSX and in our case, that JSX is the entire form component. Now that was pretty straightforward, but what that did is give us access to this formic props, which again, lets us control everything that has to do with our form. Let's log into the console and see what exactly is this formic props providing. So before the return statement, console log formic props formic. If we go to the browser, on page load, we can see the object logged in the console. If I expand the object, you can see the different properties and methods. We have errors, we have touched, handle change, handle blur, handle submit, and so on. Now this seems very familiar, doesn't it? It does because we have looked at this very object quite a few times already. The first time was when we used the use formic hook. The formic object that was returned is nothing but this prop we have right now. And even more recently, in the render props pattern for field and field array, you can see that we get a prop called form. This again is the same as formic props that we are seeing right now. It's a good question to ask why do we have the same props at the form level and the field level? I would say use the field level object when you have to deal with that individual field. But if there is something that has to be done for the entire form, use the form level formic props. Now, contrary to what I just mentioned though, in this video, I am going to use this top level formic props to show you that you can control both form and field level functionality. However, as an exercise, at the end of the video, I want you guys to implement the field level functionality yourselves. All right, let's get back to the topic at hand. Our intention is to manually trigger validations at the form level and the field level. Now back in our form, if I scroll to the bottom before the submit button, I'm going to add two more buttons. The first button is to validate the comments field since we have written a field level validate function for the comments field. The second button is to validate the entire form. Now let's go back to the console 
and see what does Formic provide to implement these button click handlers. If I expand the Formic props object, you can see that we have two methods, validate field and validate form. Let's make use of these. On the first button, let's add on click and this is going to be equal to an arrow function formic dot validate field and we need to pass in the field name which is comments similarly for the second button on click is going to be equal to an arrow function and formic dot validate form this method doesn't have any arguments let me format this save the file and test this out on page load, you can see that we don't have any errors being displayed. Now I'm going to click on the validate comments button at the bottom of our screen. When I click it, you can see that we still don't have any error messages being displayed. Seems strange. Let's see if the other button works. I'm going to click on validate all and still we don't see any error messages. Let's reload the page and try to understand what is happening. If I click on validate comments, we have the formic object logged in the console again. If I take a look at the errors object, we have the comments property. But if we take a look at the touched object, it is empty. And if you remember, our condition to show an error message is that the field has to be touched in addition to containing an error message. This is the reason we don't see any error message displayed in the UI. The same case holds for validate all as well. I click on the button, we get a new log statement, inspect errors and we have all the errors. Inspect touch though and it is empty, which is again the reason why none of the error messages are being displayed. We can fix this though. If you take a look at the formic object again, we have two more helper methods, set field touched and set touched. As the names indicate, set field touched will add that particular field to the touched object and set touched will add multiple fields to the touched object. Let's go back to VS Code and add two more buttons for this. I'm simply going to copy paste the two buttons and make the changes. Copy, paste it. First one, we're going to change this to set field touched. And we pass in comments as the argument. The text is going to be visit comments. And for the second one, formic.setTouched. And the text is going to be visit fields. Now, unlike the validate form method, which handles all the fields, set touched doesn't do that. As the argument, we have to specify an object which contains all the fields that we want to have touched set to true. For our example, we have four fields. So formic dot set touched, pass in an object, name is true, email is true, channel is true, and finally comments is true. Of course, if you set it to false, it will appear that way in the touched object. All right, let's save the file, go back to the browser and see this in action. First, I'm going to click on validate comments. Nothing changes in the UI. I click on visit comments and now we can see the error message. If we take a look at the touched object, we have comments set to true. Similarly, I click on validate all and then visit fields we can see the error messages being displayed. And if you take a look at the touched object, we have the different fields set to true. So there you go. That is all about manually triggering validations and manually visiting form fields. Now this coupled along with validate on change and validate on blur set to false can probably give you complete control of handling form validations in Formic. Now, why would you want to do something like this? Again, is left to you. I'm not sure what your requirements would be. 
But what I wanted to do is make you aware of these handy features so when time comes, you are prepared for it. One simple example I can think of for manually triggering field level validation is to check if a username already exists in the database. So right beside a form field, you can add a check username button which will perform that validation. In fact, that can be your exercise. You can make use of the field level form props to check if the username is unique or not. To quickly summarize, what we have done is change the forming component to have the render props pattern. We then get access to the formic props which contains helper methods like validate field and validate form. These methods will populate the errors object. We also have set field touched and set touched methods to populate the touched object. Both of these in combination can be used to display error messages in the UI. If you want formic to relax and you completely take care of form validations, this is probably the way to go about it. Alright then, thank you guys for watching, don't forget to subscribe and see you guys in the next video.